Hi guys, welcome back to another Scout the Defender YouTube video to an exciting update for Project 90. Today, we're gonna to be installing a brand new interior from the guys at Exmoor Trim, which is peaking just back there, which I'll reveal in a little while. But first of all, we need to remove the old interior before we can fit in the new exciting one. So let's jump straight into it. And in this video, I'll also reveal some of the thoughts and final kind of decisions I've made on the paint color for Project 92. So let's jump right into it. So before I jump straight in and just strip out this interior, I just thought I'd show you what was already in Project 90. So these are your kind of classic Defender seats on this Techno style material. These are still in really good condition. So let me know if you're interested in this full set. Leave a comment down below because they're gonna be going um, up for sale. But this is the kind of Techno fabric. You can see there's a very small amount of damage just on this one seat here, but there's nothing kind of else anywhere on the seats, but they look really great. It's also got this chubby, I think it's called a chubby cubby box, which is a little bit taller than the standard cubby, which means you've got obviously somewhere a little bit easier to rest your arm. Um, but I think they still really suit kind of a more classic traditional build. Um, so let me know if you're interested in those. What I'm going to now do is strip these out, remove obviously the seats, the rails, pull it all out, and then we can have a look at the new interior that's going in now. I can't wait to show you guys. So that's all the four bolts out and then you can just lift the chair out. Be careful you don't lose any more of those spacers. That's it, really easy. Okay guys, so now to the exciting bit where I'm gonna open up the new interior for Project 90. Um, a quick disclaimer, I won this interior in a competition entered on uh, TikTok uh, by the guys at Exmoor Trim. So go follow those guys. Also give me a follow on TikTok. I'm posting short reels of both of the builds. Um, but if you can see the box, it's in a collaboration with Cool & Vintage. If you've not checked out Cool & Vintage before, they're based in Portugal. They do amazing Land Rover Defender builds. And often they're very similar to the, almost the ambition I have for Project 90. Cool, kind of soft top canvas led uh, builds and they look amazing. So check those guys out too. But I'm gonna stop waffling now and we're gonna open up the new interior. I'm really excited for this. I think it's gonna totally transform blue. In the box we have another box. I presume this is the uh, seat base for the new seat, as it is, yeah. This is the interior, so it's like a dark or very rich black color, but because it's the cool and vintage uh, model, it's got this really nice square chunky pattern to the material. They're all full leather. They're also fully heated. We've got all of the heating electrics uh, to connect these up, which I'm sure will definitely be needed in um, Project 90 in the winter, but they look so cool. And as with always, anything with the cool and vintage brand on it, they're always just so kind of considered in terms of the aesthetic. So these are really, really lovely seats, which I can't wait to fit up. So that's just the seat base. Kick the box out the way. And here we have the seat itself. So there you go. Again, you can see the, uh, the square pattern carries on to the chair or the back of the chair itself. Again, full leather, they smell amazing. The electric's ready to connect them up to uh, the heater controls. Uh, and they're in this rich black color, which I just think looks so good. And yeah, again, big shout out to the guys at Exmoor Trim for these. So along with the seats, we've got a few other additional bits that are really gonna transform the interior. The first is the matching cubby box. Again, the same uh, kind of line from Cool & Vintage. The pattern extends over the top of the cubby box, which I think is really cool. Uh, again, just feels really great quality. Trimmed in full leather, we've got the uh, cup holders just here. And again, we've got the mechanism inside, which is all fully kitted out, which I can't wait also to install. And then we also have all of the electrics to connect these up. So we're gonna have full heated seats, which as I said before, is gonna be very welcome in uh, an open top car in the winter in the UK. Right, so before we go and install the seats, I'm gonna connect up the uh, heated seat wiring first. Obviously, it's a lot easier to do that without the seats in the way. The seats have come with uh, a pre-wired loom, which is really easy to connect. So the loom comes in three pieces for each seat. We have the switch itself. 
This is going to connect through the cubby box. I'm going to drill two holes in the cup holders to be able to mount those. We then have the connector that goes into the base of the seat itself. This just plug and play, the rest of the wiring is already connected. And then we have the main loom that will run to the battery again. There's one of these for each seat. This loom's already wired up, so we've already got all of the relays and the inline fuses in place. And the two plugs that will connect to the seatbelt base and the switch. The only bit of wiring, well, it's not even wiring we have to do, is if you're going to wire this directly to the battery, is to remove these two wires out of the loom and connect up two connectors like these that are going to mount up to the battery. So I'm going to crimp these up now and heat shrink them up, ready to connect them. And then we can run the wiring to each seat and then basically it's plug and play from there. Right, so wiring should be relatively straightforward. We'll just undo the main loom. Off, we have, off the inline fuse, we have our two wires that are going to connect directly to the battery. And I've got two terminals that will connect to the battery itself. So I just need to crimp these in place. And then really we're, we're good on the wiring front. I'll do that for both, um, both side seats. Now we've got that with the red one. Heat shrink was a bit of a tight fit. We'll do the same with the negative two. Just the same again, just mounting a terminal up to it. Again, give it a bit of a pull, check it's not going anywhere, which it's not. So with our terminals now on the end of each wire, we can just connect these up to the battery. I'm going to do one seat at a time just to double check and then basically just duplicate and do the same. So we just need to unconnect the, uh, the terminals, slot these in and then redo them up. And then that's our, that's our main wiring done. And then we can work out where we're going to run the wires to each seat. So with my wiring now running from the battery all the way along to where I'm going to mount the uh, driver's side seats, that's all secure. I can also then connect up the first switch which is going to mount obviously into the cubby box. So this is just a four pin plug, which again is already wired up. So we can connect that in place. So that's ready to go. And now I just need to connect up the connectors to the other side loom, connect those to the battery. And then that's the wiring run where I want it to. And then we can mount up the seats. So really easy kit, uh, which means you can get heated seats without having to do any worrying or wiring if you're not confident in doing so. So yeah, easy. So off camera, I found a bit of a neater way to wire this up. So they're still connected to the batteries, but the wiring for the um, switches themselves is a bit neater. I've run the wiring, if you can see down here, through this grommet that goes into effectively like the gearbox tunnel and stuff. And this is where you connect the ECU, but the grommet comes back out here. So I've run the two switches into this spot, which means I don't have wiring running across here. And instead I can connect up the switches here right where the cubby box is going to be and right where the cup holders that I'm going to drill a hole in to connect the switches to. So that's the next thing in the plan, but that's just a little bit neater. And it means that then we've got the two switches, sorry, the two plugs for this seat. And then these wires will run, I'm not sure how I'll kind of conceal those yet, but to the second or the driver's seat. So that's a little bit of a trick to try and Remove the amount, the amount of wiring that you've got running over the base of the seat box. The other thing I did is mark up where I want the switches to be mounted in the cup holders. I've marked these up here so I can get them nice and centrally and horizontally uh, aligned. So we can now drill those out. We can then run the cables through, mount up the cubby box, and then once that's done, we can then get the seats in place. So there's the two holes drilled and these plugs now fit perfectly a slot in so it almost looks oem so they look really smart so with the wiring all done it's now time to mount up the cubby box first so i'm going to just slot that in place the first thing to do is just pull the wires through the uh, cubby box itself for the heated seat switches i just drilled another little hole in the base of the cubby box underneath where the cup holders live so that fits in nicely and then everything's in the mounting kit ready to mount up. So we've got the feet, we've got all of the bolts to slot through. So it's just a, uh, four bolts all the way around, nip it up and then that's in position. And then we can mount up the seats.
battery box mounted up, that's not going anywhere now. So I've got my cup holder with my switches. I can now connect up the plugs and slot that back in place. And now we can mount up the seats. place and we can bolt them in. So that's it, the seat's in, it's already looking really great, now it's time to mount it up. So we've got the spacers from before and the bolts and we'll just slot those back in place and bolt it up and see how it fits. First seat in is looking great, I'm going to fit up the second seat and then we can connect up the final bits of wiring, add the seat bases and we're good to go. The final thing left to do is just to hook up the last little bit of electrics. So the seats already come pre-wired with the heat pads, so one wire goes into the back. So I've connected that up to the two uh, ports that we have available that are connected straight to the battery box that divert via the switch. The other one goes just into the bottom of the seat base itself, into this plug. So we can connect that now and then we're ready just to test it all works and we're good to go. So that's it, that's the interior now in. The heated seats are all connected. They're lovely and warm. They're working much, much better than in Scout, so that's a plus. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how this looks. I think the, uh, the vintage style from Cool & Vintage uh, and the partnership with Exmoor Trim looks really cool. Um, and I'm really happy with how it looks. Obviously, there's loads more work to do to Blue, which is gonna continue in the next uh, few videos. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'm really happy to have got this interior in. I think it's really transformed the inside. And yeah, lots more to come. So stay tuned, subscribe if you enjoyed the video and give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.